How you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato, and you're watching my YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for that. So, I want to show you something. This might be a cool video. I'm going to talk about the witch hazel congal aphid because they look neat. And a lot of people call the galls uh, witches' hats because that's kind of what they look like. So, first, I'm going to show you the witch hazel itself, you know, the leaves and whatnot, and what the galls look like. And then perhaps we'll take a closer look inside. Come along. Okay. That right there is witch hazel, this tree here. Okay. These are the leaves, witch hazel leaves. And here we've got the galls. See how they look a little bit like a witch's hat? Pretty neat, huh? This is a great example of the witch's hat. They are often this burgundy maroon type color, nice red, sometimes scarlet, sometimes they're pale like that. So what happens is a female comes upon the witch hazel tree and it crawls up to the leaf buds. And what it'll do is basically inject the leaf bud with a type of either enzyme or hormone, not entirely sure, and that causes the leaf to form this gall around the aphid. It develops around her. So she reproduces inside the gall asexually. Maybe not as fun as other things, but you know. She'll have about 50 to 70 young, and they'll all feed on the inside of that gall. These galls don't really harm the witch hazel tree, okay? The inside the gall is like a glucose type substance, and that provides food for the, for the baby aphids and the adult aphids. And then there'll be a second generation, and they'll all hatch, feed on the gall a little bit, and then disperse throughout the landscape and continue with the cycle. The third generation will have both males and females that reproduce sexually, you know, to create some diversity in the gene pool. And uh, the cycle starts all over again. Really neat stuff. I want to show you what these look like inside, okay? I'm going to cut one open. Take a look. Okay, so here we have a witch hazel leaf. It's got alternate stems. In fact, one side of the leaf starts lower than the other, similar to that of elm. Kind of neat there. Look up witch hazels because they're an interesting plant. I'm gonna take my knife and ever so carefully slice open the skull and see if we can find any of those aphids within. So here we have the gall. I'm about to slice it open. These galls are rich in nutrients, as I said, so they provide the nourishment and sustenance for the aphids to feed. Mostly glucose-based nutrients. But it also provides security and shelter, protection from predators and whatnot. There we go. Yes, I feel guilty cutting this open and exposing them to the elements and predators, but there's so many of them, I know I'm not doing the species much harm, and this is all in the interest of education and ultimately conservation. So it's my way of justifying doing such a thing. So there you have it, the witch hazel congal aphid. It's an impressive species. Their life cycle pretty much allows them to rapidly colonize an area in a short period of time to great success. You know, you start off with just one female adult aphid and by the end of the summer you've got a whole population all over a witch hazel tree. That might just come from the one mother. I mean look how many we have in here. As I said, 50 to 70 offspring and then the second generation is the same thing and then the third generation is going to have both males and females. And there you go, once again, feeding on the glucose and other nutrients within the gall. And really, it's the perfect habitat. I mean, they've got food, they've got protection, and they even have a nursery for their young. So the only time that they really need to leave these galls is to enrich in their gene pool. Lucky little guys when you really think about it. It's a pretty neat species, isn't it? Kind of intriguing. Anyhow, once again, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'm Chris Ignato, signing out.